Hallo und willkommen zu sieben Tagen der Wissenschaft. Oi. Hello, and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Let's start off with some space news. It has been confirmed that there is rotten egg gas around Uranus. A telescope in Hawaii has confirmed that the clouds of the light blue planet is hydrogen sulfide gas, which is the gas that makes rotten eggs smell the way they do. Whether this is true or not has often been debated in the science world, and it has now finally been confirmed. This is different to other gaseous planets such as Saturn or Jupiter, as their upper cloud layer is composed of ammonia ice. Moving closer to home now, scientists have discovered a new species of ant and it explodes. In order to defend their colony, they can latch onto threats and stretch themselves so much that their abdomen rips open and showers their attacker in yellow toxic goo. This self-sacrifice behaviour is similar to the way that bees also die when they use their sting. These worker insects don't actually reproduce, so their only goal in that respect is to keep their nest, and by extension queen, alive by any means. In other news, the impossibly adorable San Quentin kangaroo rat has been seen for the first time since 1986. While monitoring small mammal communities, Sula van der Plank and Scott Tremor were delighted to find four San Quentin kangaroo rats alive and well. A conservation plan has now been drawn up for the safety of these animals. Moving on, the US government has said that the population of wild red wolves is seriously in danger of being completely wiped out. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that only 40 remain in the wild in eastern Carolina. The end isn't nigh for the species as a whole though, as around 230 live in zoos and wildlife centres in a more stable environment. Still not a great amount though. Hopefully some happier news now. A study that was published in the journal Nature earlier this week has found that certain crocodile species actually have the ability to change the colour of their skin. The researchers discovered this by taking the animals and moving them between lighter and darker coloured enclosures, finding that the skin on their back and sides would darken within about two hours when put in a dark environment and vice versa. The researchers say that this capability is present in all the members of the genus Crocodilus, but not in alligators, nor the other members of the Crocodilidae, which are the slender snouted crocodile and dwarf crocodile, so it likely evolved in the common ancestor of Crocodilus. Interestingly, gharials also change their skin colour, but the opposite way, becoming darker in lighter environments. In older news, a new prehistoric relative of today's sea turtles has been discovered from the Cretaceous of Alabama, being named Petrucius martini. There's already another member of this genus that's been known to us for a while, but this new species expands our knowledge of this group, and shows that they had a greater range than previously thought. And it would seem that the well-known Oxford dodo actually had quite a violent death, according to research done by the Oxford Natural History Museum and others. The specimen, which was famously the inspiration for the dodo in Alice in Wonderland, was scanned to produce 3D images, and when they were examined it was discovered that small lead shot pellets were embedded in the head, although they didn't penetrate the skull. These pellets were the kind used in the 17th century for hunting birds, and so it would seem that this individual had been shot in the back of the head with a shotgun. And that's all the news for this week. Thank you very much for watching and... Sorry? We haven't got any paleo news. But there's the turtle thing. Oh, fine, hang on. Right, let's have a look. Um... The Sonosaurus was named the official state dinosaur for Arizona. Wait, because an 11-year-old asked them to? Really?